let's now understand the concept of deemed asset we saw earlier that you know to compute the net wealth you have to add deemed assets to the already existing assets so the already existing assets we have already discussed in the previous slides right let us now understand about deemed assets these are dealt with in section 4 subsection 1 clause a net wealth of an individual please note this is making a specific reference to the individual okay shall include value of the following assets which are transferred by the assessee and held by so what happens is that first thing is this is applicable to the net wealth of an individual it's not applicable to HUF or companies and this you will also see once you know you get into the details of the kinds of transfer we are talking about shall include value of the following assets which are transferred by the assessee so the transfer which is made by the assessee which could be an individual is voluntary stroke forced so it says that the assets are transferred by the SSC. Now whether he transferred it voluntarily or he was forced to transfer this is none of the tax officer's concern. Right? So let's see. In the left hand column what you will get is the details of the transferee. In the right hand column you will get the details of the provisions which are applicable. The first one is spouse. So let's say an individual transfers an asset. Asset means asset for wealth tax purpose to his stroke her spouse. This shall be included in the net wealth of the individual. And who's the individual? Individual is the transferer, whether transferred directly or indirectly. Now, what does this mean? This basically means that whether you transfer the asset directly, I mean let's say A is there, he transfers the asset to his spouse or indirectly. So A transfers it to B who transfers it to B's spouse. So whether you transfer directly or indirectly, it will be included in the net wealth. However, there is an exception to this rule. Asset transferred for adequate consideration. Now what does this mean? This means if you transfer anything to your spouse and you get paid for it, which is adequate. Okay? Or in connection with an agreement to live apart. In these two cases, if the asset is transferred to a spouse, then it is not to be included in the net wealth of the individual but will be included in the wealth of the spouse. Second, if the individual transfers an asset to a minor child not being a married daughter. So if you transfer an asset to a minor child who is not a minor married daughter then it will be included in the net wealth of the individual. Now this child could be stepchild, he could be an adopted child, it doesn't make a difference. And all these provisions are also discussed in one of the subsequent slides in detail, but let me just, for the sake of completeness, read them out to you. Included in the wealth of a parent whose net wealth is greater or who maintains minor where marriage does not subsist. Right? So what happens is that if a minor owns certain assets, then these will be 
included in the wealth of the parent whose net wealth is greater. So there are two parts here. One is transfer of an asset by an individual. Okay, which is this green portion which is there. Okay, the rest of the portion you just leave for the time being. I will discuss with this separately in the subsequent slides. The exception to the rule that an asset transferred by an individual to a minor child is not taxable in the hands of the individual is assets held by a minor child suffering from the disability referred to in section 80U of the Income Tax Act. So if a minor child is suffering from any of the disabilities which are referred to in this section, then the assets will not be included in the hands of the individual. Second is, what happens to a minor married daughter? We said that if you transfer an asset to a minor child, it will be included in the hands of the individual. But if the individual transfers this asset to a minor child, who is actually a married daughter, assets of the daughter shall be included in her own wealth except when transferred by her husband, father-in-law, mother-in-law for inadequate consideration. So what will happen in this case is, let's say there is a minor married daughter. If an individual transfers, individual being a father or a mother, transfers an asset to a minor married daughter, it shall be included in her own wealth. Okay, but if this individual who is transferring the asset is the husband, father-in-law or mother-in-law, then if these are for inadequate consideration, it is taxable in the hands of these people. Why? Because these are specific clauses which are there. So if you see, it will get covered here. Because if the husband of the minor married daughter transfers an asset to her, it will be included as that of a spouse. And for father-in-law and mother-in-law, there is a subsequent clause which we will discuss. Right? This last point, again, just leave it here for the time being, just like I asked you to leave this point here for the time being. This is just written here for the sake of completeness. There is a separate slide where we will be discussing this aspect. Revocable transfer. So suppose this individual makes a revocable transfer. Then what happens? Asset transferred by an individual to a person or AOP otherwise than under an irrevocable transfer will be taxable in the hands of the individual. Again, what do you mean by revocable transfer? We will discuss in subsequent slide. Now, what what Provision also applies to all these transfer is, please note all these transfers, spouse, minor, child or a revocable transfer is, that if you transfer one thing to an individual, okay, and what he does is he converts it into a different form, where the asset is converted into a different form, the value of such different form has to be taken on the valuation date. The value of the creation is not to be considered. Now what does all this mean? Let's see an example. Suppose A transferred an urban land which qualifies as an asset to B. Right? Let's say this transfer happens on 1-3-2011. What B does is, he sells it on 33-2011 and invests the cash that he receives okay, into jewellery. Now on the valuation date which is 31-3-2011, the land does not exist. What exists is the jewellery. So even in such case, as long as jewellery qualifies as an asset for wealth tax purposes, 
द वैल्यू ऑफ द ज्वेलरी विल बी इंक्लूडेड इन द नेट वेल्थ ऑफ ए राइट सो इट डजेंट मेक अ डिफरेंस वेर यू कन्वर्टेड इट इन टू अ डिफरेंट फॉर्म इट्स स्टिल इंक्लूडेड इन द नेट वेल्थ ऑफ द ट्रांसफर 